All right, good day, everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. So we just got done talking. We just uh, completed uh, a discussion about um, uh, six ligands and uh, how they create a um, an octahedral geometry or eight-sided uh, geometry. And when we look at the octahedral geometry, so six ligands. All right, six ligands is octa octahedral okay and um, remember when we talked about the the typical splitting that occurs um, where you get three orbitals at lower energy and 2d orbitals at higher energy okay that's your typical splitting and this type of splitting is is very common with octahedral geometry you have six ligands coming in okay um, because those ligands are oriented a, a certain way and the way they interact, um, two of those d orbitals are going to be facing directly on um, with uh, two of the ligands. Um, so they're going to be at higher energy versus the other three, which are kind of interacting with the ligands, not, not head on, but kind of off to the side a little bit. So they'll be at a little lower energy, okay? Now, there are some exceptions to this. And the first exception that I want to talk about to that rule. Okay, the first exception I want to talk about is a geometry um, known as tetrahedral. Okay, tetra, H-E-D-R-A, tetrahedral geometry. Okay, um, we typically, we tend to see this with a D0 or D10, okay, electron configuration. So we don't see tetrahedral in a lot of complexes. We see it either when you have no d electrons in d orbitals or you have um, a full d orbitals. So very very special situations. Um, these tend to be um, these tend to be elements that are on the the right hand side of the of the the d, the d block uh, because their orbitals their d orbitals tend to be full or maybe even um, empty. Um, the example that I'm going to go ahead and use is um, uh, copper. We're going to take copper. Um, so if you look at the uh, electron configuration of a naked, okay, naked copper atom is going to have argon, um, 4s1, 3d10, uh, okay, 4s1, 3d10. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take copper, okay, the copper 2 ion, okay, so it's going to be argon, let's see, 3D9, okay, because I took, I ionized the copper, I took the S away, and then one of the Ds away, so I have 3D9 here, my copper ion, um, okay, so, um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, give this, I'm going to uh, make a complex with this that has a tetrahedral um, geometry, geometry to it, okay? And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use um, uh, chlorine, and I'm going to call this Cu copper 2 chloride, okay? And so I'm going to have my Cu here, okay, plus 2. And then I'm going to have my chloride ligands coming in here. And then imagine this is popping out at me. So this is popping out this way, all right, and there's a chlorine here. And then imagine back here and back here, I'm going to have chlorine here chlorine here, okay, and these all are contributing lone pairs of electrons, okay, and you can see if I take my four ligands, so there's a ligand here, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, like so, okay, so what I'm going to do and I'm going to take these little guys like so, and let's just go ahead and see. Okay, so imagine that I have a face here. All right. 
and then I have another face here, all right, like so, and then back behind here, this dotted line is, is kind of behind here, okay? So you can see that I have my four-sided um, structure here, it's a pyramid, and then in the middle, oh, I don't have a color thing, but in the middle, okay, I have my, my copper, and then I have my four chloride, my four chlorine ligands here, okay? So this is that uh, pyramidal, um, or tetrahedral, excuse me, tetra, tetrahedral geometry we're talking about. Now, because these are lined up differently than the octahedral geometry, um, these are lined up a little differently than the, the, the octahedral geometry that we looked at, and uh, I don't know if I have that picture that I drew earlier. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so if we compare this tetrahedral to the octahedral, you, you see that I have ligands here and here, okay, um, and a ligand back here. So there are orbitals, okay, so orbitals down here, okay, are gonna be much less affected. So this is kind of interesting. What happens is um, my splitting, I have a very unique splitting that occurs um, and this, this splitting uh, is very specific to the, the um, let me put this back up here, very specific to the um, tetrahedral geometry. And so, let's just draw that real quick. Okay, so you are used to, um, when we talked about this, the typical kind of splitting that we get right here. So this is your, your typical octahedral, your average generic octahedral, my energy here. Um, I've got three orbitals, d orbitals at a lower energy, four, five, like that, okay? This is my, my, my standard octahedral. What happens with tetrahedral, oh, and I should just uh, point out the, um, the lower energy orbitals, these guys down here, if you remember, these were the T2g orbitals, and then these guys up here are the eg orbitals okay and okay so this is octahedral okay and then let's just uh, contrast that to the tetrahedral geometry okay so my tetrahedral geometry all right what we get is we get a the swap over we get a swap of the eg and t2g orbitals so what i get is i get two orbitals okay down here and then one two three orbitals here, so my T2g and my eg orbitals flip, and um, this, the tetrahedral geometry is almost always going to be a weak field, so it'll almost always be a high spin system, okay? So, um, that's kind of an exception to it. Um, copper to chloride um, is is one it is one of the exceptions that I kind of wanted to point out, and the um, orbital energies uh, flip, um, and that's that. Um, I think in the next video we will talk about square planar complex geometry and the exceptions there, um, because that's yet another exception. Um, and it's a different type of geometry. So in all, we'll be talking, in all, we'll have covered the octahedral, the tetrahedral, and then the square planar um, complex geometry. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging in.